insecurity around institutions of higher learning has grown its deep roots to stability with increased cases of robbery, robbery with violence and theft that happen around this varsity environment. The victims of these condemned acts are usually students residing from within or outside the campus environment as well as the staff working in this particular institution. And though the security teams have come up with programs and measures to curb these cases, the perpetrators seem to be finding smart ways of performance. This is why, together with a group of communication students, we set out to find the state of security around Moi University. The university has five security masks that are erected in the university premises to light the gates, corridors, academic highway and the hostels during the night. However, this advantage does not extend to the students residing outside school who greatly depend on the security lights from the shops, other buildings around their residentials or either use their phones to light. As we embarked on finding out the state of security around the varsity, there are already cases of robbery with violence that were reported to the nearest police station, while many others went unreported and the victims were willing to share their experience with us. So, I was able to get a phone call to my neighbor. I was able to get a phone call to my neighbor. I was able to get a phone call to my neighbor. They ransacked me. They beat me up and took almost everything, uh, let me say everything I had, except my clothes. Yeah, they grabbed me because I was really in shock. Like, why, why would two guys grab me? Kama ni kunyanganya simu, si moja tuwa ni zani nyanganya aende. So, kanyanganya two phone, and they ran away. So, one of them hit, hit me a blow, and I fell into a trench over there. And uh, so they took me and put me on the other side and the lady there. So, they separate you from the lady. So they were 3-3? Three, three. I'm not even sure because I was being hit on the ground, being stamped with uh, Gambut's shoes, you know, and blows raining over, all over you. And everything else, everything the house had been stolen, including even the clothes, all the electronics, everything. The only thing that was left was the, was the bed. So, kwa hiyo harakati ya kupisha mtu wa kwanza, nilipisha wa kwanza akapita kupita, kuangalia ule wa pili ya pite, like, ni mtu ingi alitoa maze haka mdonga nao lakini ni kamkono so like ni kaumia kidogo by the time mwenye nilikuwa na ee ule wakwanza alikuwa na mnyanganya simu though their experiences may sound like crime scenes in film noir but this is exactly what this young intellects go through in their quest for knowledge what my team wishes to find out is how the security teams responded to the various robberies after they received reports and what is the general view of the victims about the state of security around Moi University. At night, the school is well lit with security lights along the paths and the hostel, but for the students residing outside the school compound and who are commonly referred to as the non-residents, darkness and the muddy roads are the factors that render most of them vulnerable to attacks and robbery. Ross Lorgisa, 
a member of our team joins Hillary Anekea who is a victim of robbery in an exclusive revelation of his experience. Yeah, so this is, way, this is where it all happened on that fateful night, about a year ago, 2018 I guess. Mm -hmm. So uh, it was a friend's birthday mm -hmm. that stretched into the night and uh, there were female counterparts in the birthday. Mm -hmm. So it was about 1.30, we left the house at about 12.30. Where was the birthday? But it was uh, in some residential place over there, and it was busy, but then there are people from all over uh, the school, some were from the hostels, some came from these other sides, you know, and there are females in the group also. Yeah. So the body stretched into the night, about one, about 12.30, mm -hmm. so we left the house, you know, and people were a little bit drunk, honestly. <laughs> so you were drunk during that night? I, was, uh, I wasn't really drunk, I was, I was tipsy, I was, okay. it wasn't that much. So we came. The whole group came from the houses over there, busy residentials, to this place, this junction over here. So this is where everybody split. So there's this lady friend of mine that was in the birthday party that day, and uh, she lives over there. So after we, depart we separated from the group, she asked me to escort her to her place. And I thought, okay, why not? Because, you know, she's a lady and... Uh, security. Security, yeah. Because the road, road really, really, looks, really looked lonely that day. So uh, she was a little bit tipsy, that's why I decided to take her to the house because I think uh, her safety is my responsibility. True. So the rest of the group went to the other side, the other students came from the hostels, so I decided to take the responsibility to take her to her place. So while we were here walking, just here, this exact spot, she removed her phone to check the time, and I remember it was 1, 1.30 a.m. in the morning. Yes. So she was like, oh, it's not even that late, so we can go get to the house and you can go back. Okay. Immediately she put the phone back into the pocket. Some two guys were walking next to us. One of them grabbed me. And I was scared for a moment. I have never experienced something of that sort. So I, I told him, yo, the first thing that came to my mind was, I don't have a phone. I said in Swahili, hey, seen a phone. <laughs> yes. And uh, so I started running away. I held the, the lady? I had the lady's hand and started running away towards that direction. And uh, there were about four more people in front. And I thought these people were students, they could help me. And uh, little did I know that they were the same group. These are six people, but they are well strategized. They, I was held in between. You know, I was running towards the, that direction, shouting, hoping that somebody will come to my aid. And uh, unfortunately, <laughs> the people I expected to help me turned against me. So one of, and it had rained heavily that night. So one of them hit, a, hit me a blow and I fell into a trench over there. And uh, so they took me and put me on the other side and the lady there. So they separate you from the lady. So they were three, three? Uh, I'm not even sure because I was being hit on the ground, being stamped with the gumboots, shoes, you know, and blows raining over, all over you. And you can't really comprehend what's going on. So the lady was about somewhere here and uh, I was over there at the trench and uh, so I could hear the lady shouting saying she was being raped and I was being hit over there uh, so I couldn't really help you know so what they really they really check your, your, your pockets they want any valuable from money phones anything so that day I knew I was not, I was not really sober so I had left my phone in the house I only, I really, I only had uh, the key to my house, but the lady had, the, had her phone and some 350 shillings, I guess. So while I was being there, they overturned me, like literally up, upside down, to make sure that they empty all your pockets, from the breast pockets to the other pockets for, on the trousers. So after the, I was beaten unconscious, really, and I was left in the in the pool of water over there. So they came back. The entire six men came to the lady. And she was, from what I had, from afar, I could hear, she was screaming, say, please, don't rape me. Don't rape me, don't rape me. And uh, I, try, I was trying to beg them, please, don't do anything to her. You've taken the phone and the, just, yeah, and the money, just let us go. So I was really trying to talk, then one of them came back and again stepped on my head, like, it was so painful, so I had to keep quiet, hoping that they won't do anything to the lady. So uh, I stayed in the water, I think it was, for an entire 10 minutes in this road, on this road rather, 
nobody was coming to our aid and it's just a few minutes from the shopping center you know so after a while i think the lady from after that after we had gone the lady said the men had undressed her really they had taken her trousers off and her inner pants and uh, they were fondling her i don't know some two three men you know like they were taking turns or something but they really didn't rape her they were you know they were using the hands so one of them say yeah they just violated her so one of them said one of the men among the six said uh in Swahili in Swahili or in Kalenjin I don't know but ah tumecha tumesha chukua acha acha na hii end you know let her go you know but before she went she was put right here in the middle of the road and she was being slapped and asked are being asked stupid questions uko school gani you know which 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 course are you taking where do you come from like where is your home and the first time she was even confused she said i live over there then they slapped her again where do you come from this is not your home you know it was really devastating so i was really i was lying in the pool of water listening to everything happened then after that they told her hey go pick up your boyfriend and go to the house they already made up the assumption that this is your boyfriend somehow so and uh, so they say go pick your boyfriend take him to the house so the girl went came to where i was lying tried to pick me up and drag me to her, her place. And at that time they were watching all this? Yeah, they were watching. They were not going away. Funny thing. They are standing at the same position, not going away, watching you go. You know, so yeah, I went to the girl's place. I was really scared. I couldn't I really couldn't come back because they had even taken the key to my house. So I spent the night there and came back in the morning. Did, what happened the one did you go and report this at the police station or go uh, to the health center for the check up? Funny thing is I I was really hurt. My face was swollen. I woke up in the morning and I couldn't recognize myself really. So and uh, I didn't go to the the health facility. I found uh, an alternative mode of treatment. I went to the chemist, to the pharmacy, you know, just bought some my painkillers and stuff. So I never went to the health facility. What's the case incident? I didn't report the I didn't report the case because um, from what I've had friends of mine have been attacked before and uh, no action has really been taken. You know it's just a matter of writing a statement and it's that's it. And it happens every time. You know this is the university people go to uh, it's fact that people go to party on Thursdays and Fridays. And uh, the whole thing uh, comes to an end at about 3 a.m. 2 a.m. so that means people go to their places at 2 a.m. 3 a.m. in the morning and it happens all the time all the time so a, f- a friend of mine was attacked uh, some time back he reported but really nothing was uh, was no action was taken so I tell not to because i thought um, it would be creating a fuss out of nothing because i I'll just get well and at least i didn't die you know <laughs> I, i still have my life so yeah that's what thanking god for so i really didn't report it yeah okay and has that made you change your perception about walking during the night about parties that go deep into the night yeah 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 so since that day i don't remember the last time i went to a club <laughs> i don't remember the last time i went to late time late night parties because these days even while i'm in bed and somebody knocks my door at night i'm scared you know they don't know who's there it's a friend he's just coming to check on you but then It's at, it's late into the night but you you just get scared because of what happened. And, and did you talk did you talk about it tell your friends what happened or you just kept it quiet? Uh I had to talk to my friends about it because I I feel, I feel like that was the best way to deal with the situation. I was traumatized, you know. But and their boys, you know, boys make fun out of everything. So they try, yeah, who are you a bit and You know, they make of they make the yeah so you really try to forget about it you know ah, and the, another thing same night fre- some two friends of mine were ambushed again somewhere somewhere over there the friends from the party it's the friends from the birthday party you know they had just dropped the two girls at the hostels and they were coming back and two men jumped out of nowhere from some unfinished buildings you know but luckily they managed to run away they couldn't catch up with them yeah. so um, i don't know whether it's the same group or it's a different group because they say they were attacked sometime at two i think that was after he was attacked so it might be the same part, same group of people i'm not sure yeah. so thank you so much
another member of our team, Tony Muluo, joins Millicent Chacha, who is also a victim of robbery in another revelation of events that happened not even 200 meters from where Hillary was attacked. Around 11, almost 11. So we were from Dadina. I, I used to stay at Buruja that time. So I saw a guy behind us, but then I can see him probably is also going to his place. So I didn't even tell my friend. So for some time, okay, that guy kept on following us, following us. I got suspicious. So after some time, the Lena the guy me could from behind I'm gonga somewhere here. So I think they did that in quite helpless as in his idea. So I thought to I thought it was too much. It was around this place, just here at this corner. So we I'm gonga utukaza kimbia, so we kimbia coming to this direction, this other side. Come those guys were four and Kulkona Willy this other side. So they came and grabbed me. I think Kulkona Mona Kony and Kwame Kafonia. Oh, that time at least, Nikwame wash a torch. So the guy came and Akani Nyanganya shoe, the phone. Yeah, they grabbed me, Kwanza Willy, in Kakwa shock. Like, why would two guys grab me? Come and Kunyanganya Simu Simoja Chuan is an Nyanganya Ayende. So Kanyanganya two phone and they ran away. So the second time, Pia, Nikwatu with a friend. Okam Gonga, Olim Gonga, actually alumia this left leg, Okamia pa, and then Okanyanganya Simu. Okaza Lambia, you give me your phone or you'll get hurt, because in Kwame Kata Kopea. So Kanipea Simu, or Nikopea Simu, and then that guy, Akanyangushanga Chini, Akanimbe, I'll rape you. And then I was like, why do you want to rape me? I've, given, I've already given you the phone. So Niache Tu Wende. So I took it to care when Kua Karibuna Yumani and Mulkua Jani. Jani, on my way to my place. On your way to go. So, bad at Kenya, it could be took care of the Opian. Last same, around me. Maybe in the Lizard Masai, did you guess and Gabi? Around 10, 11. Yeah. yeah. So after, after 10, now, did you, will you follow Kuenda Kuapa? Yeah, I went to my place. Yes. And then the early morning, Fanya, did you report to Popote? No, I didn't report. Because yeah. I didn't see their faces, so I yeah. how, how, how would I have been helped? Nah, at where did you go? Uh, I try not to be out past eight at mm. night. Yeah. So I just stay indoors. So you could say, Monzo, you can say, 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 uh, the first time uh, I was from a friend's place. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, kulenza kunyesha. Yeah. So I had to wait. I did kwache kunyesha so that I go back to my place. Who is that going to be for such a thing? Bad day, good news. Ali, Ali, and Aje. That my uncle is going to marry. Okay. After the incident, actually, he was, he was hurt. But then, since, since it was late at night, he took me to my place. Karudi Kwake, then the next day he went to the hospital. Yes. Uh, he's still around, but I'll go to Yeah. So, in Haliaka, what's your name? Kosa Watu. Yeah. So, we talk about Kashule, Kusu Sola Elida, and Tazamako Kusu, Nini, Mamba Wizi, Kashule, Mamba, and Fusu Pigua, Nini. There's a lot of insecurity and a lot of theft and robbery. And all, nah, yeah, nah, like Nini. Nini, could you say Nini and Ivan in a Sabisha? To Nana Gumba could have easy, you know, and a fuzzy could pick up with your video. I think with Zunia, definitely they're looking for money. Yeah. That's why they're stealing phones so that they can sell and get money. Okay, now, um, does a Marco Puso swallow the security up on you? I think the school should should put measures to mm. ensure there's more security. Because mm. I don't get why students are being mugged on their way to their places, and yet this is a learning institution. It's, uh, yeah, we expect the school to, to take care of us. In the school, Stacy Wairimu, a member of our team, meets Felix Nyabala, who was attacked and robbed in the school compound. Okay, Nyabala, uh, you were a victim of um, insecurity cases. Uh, tell us what happened. Okay, it was that uh, fateful night. Uh, uh, it was around 9 p.m. I never expected uh, I could be attacked. I was coming from from Hostel K, from Hostel L, towards Soweto, 
then it was the Soweto Soweto Transformer. Uh, two guys approached, one from behind, one from the front. The one from behind clamped me in the in the mouth, so I could not I could not shout. The ones the one from the front kicked my legs, and they they gave me a lift into the bush. Eh? When I when they took me into the bush, uh, the that bush adjacent to Soweto. When they mm-hmm. took me there, they they ransacked me. They beat me up and took almost everything. Let me say everything I had except my clothes. So your phone was stolen. Yeah, they they took my phone. They, I, with me, I had uh, a phone, I had a laptop, I had a camera. All they went with all all that. And you're saying you were just walking within the hostel environment. You were not even outside the yeah, school I, premises. I was I was walking from so from hostel L to towards Soweto. I was going to see a friend whom we had been shooting a video with throughout the day. So you know, sir, by by three by nine p.m. It's not that late. Mm, yeah. It's not that late. You never expect someone to to attack you. Added to the fact that it is within the school compound, mm. you don't expect someone can attack you right inside the school compound. And uh, added to the fact that uh, along the way there are lights, mm, yeah. so y- you think you are so secure, but it, it was the opposite. We didn't call for help or shout, ask some people it, to come. It, you know, when when they when they carried me into the bush. The, they clamped me in the in the mouth. I could not shout. Mm. They, they ransacked everything. After taking everything, I got a, a, a little chance when I shouted. It was the, too late. It was too late. No, not not that too late. But uh, two others approached. Mm-hmm. I thought they were help. Kumbe, they were they were just uh, with them. Yeah. They were with them. Mm. Yeah. So one of them had a rod. Mm-hmm. When when he approached, he he hit me in the neck. I fell down. They they continued beating me, beating me uh, left right. Then I managed to kick one of them, and uh, and uh, through that uh, leeway, I I managed to escape. Did you bother reporting? Because I know sometimes the security in the administration block says as long as you have the serial number of your phone, your laptop, it can be tracked. Did you bother reporting? Okay. That that same night, I went to the hospital, the dispensary in Moyo University. Mm-hmm. Then, to make matters worse, I met the security guys. They were they were around that that uh, premise, and they were just talking. When I ra- arrived there. They asked what had happened to me. Then, then uh, I narrated. Then, to make it worse, they told me, "You are the people stealing from students here. So today you got your match." So you were turned into a culprit yourself. Yeah. Okay. So uh, instead of being a victim, I was mm-hmm. a culprit. They told me, "You are the people who have been terrorizing students around campus. So today you got your match." So it's somewhat pointless to even report because they, so, uh, as long as you are walking outside at late hours, they just brand you as one of the thieves. So uh, I was not discouraged by that. Uh, the following day, I went to the administration block to go report the case. Mm-hmm. I reported the case to the security at the administration block. Then they told me they would follow up with the case. Mm-hmm. Up to today, they have not called me. Have you ever gone anything. back? Uh, I've, I, I went back once, mm-hmm. but now it was becoming a bother. Mm. Why go? Because this was not the first the first instance when uh, where I was robbed. Oh, this was not the first. It was not the first instance. The first instance, I was staying in Hostel M. Someone broke in in the night, picked almost everything. He picked my laptop and uh, iron box. He went with, with all that. Then the following day, I reported with the security at the administ- administration block. They did nothing. So, what would you say about the security? Are they really uh, out to help students, or they take matters lightly, based okay. on your view? Okay, 
uh, based on my view the the security in Moitex issues very lightly in as much as we are promised a heaven where we are all secure when you come from home you expect this is an environment where you're going to be safe you're going to be guarded all all 24 7 but uh, the security around my university they assume everything they are not that proactive. Uh, you mentioned that in the first instance your laptop and iron box were stolen from your room. So where were you at that particular time? Okay, it was very late in the night. It was around 2 p.m. 2 a.m. I mean, 2 a.m. We were all asleep. This this uh, this person came in. He, he removed the window the window pane and uh, he gained access into that room. That room had no grids. Mm. But, uh, but uh, that, that time had found when I had reported to the janitor and to, to the, the housekeeper several times that that room had no grids. They, they, they needed to grill it. Mm. They took no, they, they, they never took any care to even come make it. So you were robbed while in your room? I was in my room. It was very late. When You know, it, at night, you, when you try following someone, you can even be, you can even be killed. Mm -hmm. At what instance did you realize that all oh, my things have been stolen? Uh, was it in the morning when you woke up or uh, maybe in that period before uh, daytime? Okay, it, it was just that 2, 2 a.m. that I realized I was being robbed. Uh, the, this I had a phone and the phone was uh, just adjacent to, to my my where I had uh, placed my pillow. Then when this person tried to to take the phone away, it was uh, connected to charger. When he tried to pull it, it fell on me and uh, I woke up immediately. But the things were already taken. Thing? The, the laptop and the iron box. Yeah. He all, ran away. all that had had already been taken. Mm -hmm. So we tried follow, following him with my roommate. He was nowhere to be seen. Mm -hmm. uh, you mentioned you are in Hostel M. Have you heard of instances of where students are robbed? Yeah, it, yeah I've heard of instances where students are, have been robbed. By that time, I had a friend called Tuku James. Uh, he he's my fr he informed me that uh, when he was in his second year he was also attacked by by a gang a group of gang in in the stage he was beaten beyond recognition he had to defer then he he joined the school summer that some some years after yeah, it really deteriorated his his health and once you report to the janitors, are these cases handled or uh, it's still the same old things just go by? Okay, it, uh, w when you go reporting, they will tell you, they will follow up with the instance or with the case. But uh, the actual thing, uh, after you've informed them, they don't even bother to follow up. It's a because, gone case. Because if they bother to follow up, they, can, they, they should ask, ask you to get back to them, give them much more detail. If you are not called, they show they show no no concern about it. Mm -hmm. How how can you prove that they follow up with such cases? So students are left helpless. Yeah, it is it is now a heaven for I for myself, God for us all. That's the security situation in Moi. During the night when these acts take place. The victims find themselves in helpless situations with, with even no one to inform of what had happened to them. Many of them are forced to accept what had happened to them and move on with life while others opt to report the matter to the nearest security team, which in this case is the security department in the institution. Though the blame is normally pushed to the idolers around these learning institutions, there are some cases that point the blame to the people bestowed with the responsibility of upholding security both in the students' residential as well as their entire institution. Shanta Cherono, a final year student in Moi University, found her house broken into after holidays 
and the deal seemed to have been served and sealed by the caretaker. Frida Gatwiri interviews her about her experience. So nikapigiwa simu nikaambiwa na rafiki yangu neighbor kaniambia nyumba yako jana waliiba usiku hawakusikia lakini waliona imefunguka asubuhi. Eh so kuuliza nikapigia na nike ateka hapo anashika simu nikapigia landlord akasema anaenda kuangalia so nilikuwa na expect angalau landlord anisaidie juu ya policy angalau but akajifanya ni kama hajui but then later when nilirudi shule nilirudi shule nikakuja kuangalia walikuwa wameiba tu gas mbili nilikuwa nimekea rafiki alikuwa na hama kwake so nikamwekea mzigo wakaiba gas mbili and shoes lafu hizo vitu zingine zilikuwa zimetupwa chini mm. uh, so when you came to check it was a true thing eh yeah. <laughs> walikuwa wameiba and then surprisingly <laughs> they do they look <laughs> e e yako nini haikuwa imevunjwa <laughs> kumaanisha alivunja padlock so probably labda aliko, alienda akakata juu ya nikiateka labda wengine wangejua anafanya nini yeye nikiateka so akaenda akakata lock no the padlock so ili kila kitu ilikuwa sawa the padlock haikuwa na vinyo ulifika at the scene what mm-hmm. was your first reaction what action did you take of course okay mimi niliambia wazazi wazazi akasema juu ya ni police the landlord nimwambie hmm. so of course i was shocked definitely a shock nitaanza kununua nitatoa wapi 9000 ya gas ya bestie yangu na na yangu kumwambia the landlord akasema there is nothing that will be done hakuna kesi hapo hivyo like blankly and how long and you lived at, at, at his plot two semesters two semesters yeah. and during that two semesters were there any other reported cases of breakins Okay around stage there were lakini kwenye nilikuwa naishi hukuku na mine was the first. Mm. Mm. So how did you come over that overcome that like you, you don't have gas anymore like your stuff is missing your shoes. So tulijaribu kufuatilia my dad has a friend hukuku I think ni Saidi tulijaribu kufuatilia tukona haina haja juu hata the guy the landlord alikuwa ashaanza kusema kuna kesi hataki story za hiyo nini yeah. so tuliamua kuachana tunayo nikanunua gas yeah. na nikahama mm, tuwa safe kwenye naishi sasa ni safe okay so you are now over it yeah inabidi yeah. mm at the end of the day cuz nothing will be done hata ukiwaambia police the police hapa watafanya nini there is nothing that they normally do so utabaki tu ukihangaika peke yako How did you come to the conclusion that it's the caretaker who was responsible? Oh. First the caretaker ali ali when the nini the robbery was ilikuwa Aisha Aisha akapotea hakuwa anashika simu hakuwa anashika simu za landlord and then uh, kukawa na after that tuseme some some weeks when the sasa other students walikuwa wanakuja shule kutafuta nyumba akachukua kuna mtu alilipa rent to his number the caretaker sasa mm. the caretaker akaenda na hiyo pesa akipoa changa hiyo so tukajua tu ni yeye never came back alipotea like he went after kuiba hizo nini ku break into my house na kuchukua hiyo pesa 22000 a semester's rent ya a student a friend akapotea hiyo so hakuna kitu ilifanyika actually labda landlord alimfuata but atukujua sisi nothing Akuna, nothing was done hata mwenye alipoteza 22000 hakuna kitu ilifanyika hivyo tu and concerning whether he took the matter to the police station or not this is what she answered no what? the guy landlord alikuwa already yani police hmm. so na report kwa nani acha kuambia hakuna kesi ni yeye ndo police hakuna kesi hmm. yeah were there any witnesses uh, nilikuwa nyumbani so Hakuna mtu aliona hadi asubuhi akaona mlango wangu uko wazi na siko shule ndio kanipigia simu. Ya yeah, and nini cha 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 uzuni ni ati tulikuwa tumelipa shilingi 1000 nini for security. Tukampea landlord. No, tukampea the caretaker. 
Some okay. further they the 1000 shillings ya security. Mm. Mm. Got naenda kitu kama 3 weeks. Lakini bado tukaibiwa na yeye but this is so. Like yeah. mm. didn't he use like the 100 the 1k to maybe pay a security guard. Uh, at the end of the day to feel ni kama hiyo pesa tunko tu tumeibiwa kwa sababu sasa hakuna kitu ilifanyika mimi niliibiwa hakuna mm. mtu ange trust hiyo police ni moju nishaibiwa you know ya yeah, na wameiba mm. watu wakiwa watu wajasikia wameiba tu so in fact hiyo kiateka alikuwa na alikuwa anaishi hapo but you see so na all nini is na point kwake yeah what is your opinion about the state of security in my university generally i feel that uh, the place we live is very unsafe especially considering that every other time uh, around lati and the other side of moy watu upigwa kila siku like every other day ona pigwa na watu we don't know how many locals how many students so it's generally unsafe so do you watch our security wanafanya nini lakini they should do something The same deal seems to have been executed on another student. His name is Kimani and he is willing to share the experience with Rafael Kaguera, a member of our team. Uh, my name is Kimani and I'm a fourth year in the School of Information Sciences. And so a, week, a few weeks ago, I came and found my house had been robbed and everything else, everything in the house had been stolen, including even the clothes, all the electronics, everything. The only thing that was left was the, was the bed. It was also during the period when there was the strike at Moi University. So when uh, when did you, did you come back exactly and uh, did you realize uh, what had happened? So I had gone home a few weeks, uh, a few days before the strike. Okay. I just gone home to see people at home. So I left the other tenants at here around here. So when I went home, then the strike happened. So I decided to stay at say, for the period that the studies had been suspended. So I decided to stay at home. So when I came back, I found my house had been broken into, the padlock had been cut using an axe, and all the valuables had been stolen, and there was no other houses were vacant. So after you have come back, you have realized your house had been broken into. So what steps did you take after that? I went to report to the Texas police station, and they came with an officer here. So they observed the house, looked at the and uh, the the items that had been left and also saw that the padlock had been cut. Then he recorded a statement and told me to wait. I'm still waiting. So you, so you mean all that time you're still waiting for a feedback from the police? Yeah. And uh, what, did you, what exactly steps have they taken or just waiting for, for the feedback? Well, they came and interviewed a few people. They also came and searched a few houses, but nothing, nothing Nothing was found in the houses. And uh, have you reported your cases to the school and the security offices? Not yet. For, for why? Why? Because, uh, because I believe this is a, this is a criminal case. Yeah. The one that the culprit to be apprehended by the police. So, what do you believe is? Do you believe like there's a connection between the school uh, security system and uh, the Kases police station? I think police, the police have more have more capacity to handle such matters more than the, the school administration yeah. because they can also prosecute the, the, those found guilty those found the items also be prosecuted. So do you want to say like uh, your caretaker is not uh, taking any security measures in your compound and uh, ensuring that your things are safe when you leave for your home? Yeah, I think uh, the protectors you know, is responsible for it. But I think it's even careless, even reckless. Because he came and found the house had been broken into, and he never called me to inform me. I only came back and realized that the house had been broken into myself. I never received a phone call from him. So, if I can ask you one last, uh, not uh, like I can say the last question, what uh, opinion can you give, uh, like uh, the state of the security around here? And, uh, what do you think the school is doing to change the situation of the security here? I think the security is okay, except for a few rotten elements within the society. 
I think I can't say that the security is bad because my house was broken into. I think the mine was just an isolated case. But I think the demonstration needs to work more to do to safeguard the security of students. They should know more patrols and this should also be get a good relationship with the Do you believe uh, there is a uh, action that will be taken, or do you have you given up uh, following up your case? Uh, are you following I'm giving up hope. Yeah? I'm giving up hope. Why? Why would you give up hope? Uh, because I don't think the items will be found. And, uh, I, don't, um, I just let me give up because I think I'm not going Just given up. So maybe can you tell us uh, the new item is the things that you have stolen, that you have stolen from me. Yeah. I had a 32 inch smart flat screen, also had me. Mm. Also, I also stole my woofer, but about almost 10,000. I also stole my, all my clothes, including the suitcase, everything, including the socks, the shoes, the shirts, the, everything. I also stole my gas, my carpet. Iron box, and a pomoja na kepli anu ni amaji. Chini anu masana kumbole na nguo zangu. Ndo kitu na anu masana. Please wange na baki shia nguo. So katole na nguo zangu libi tena nikuje ni bumi zangu na mpya tena. Sata na nikuanza maisha upya. So have you tried to talk to your caretaker and maybe try to find some leverage or something, just uh, something small from the caretaker or something. Ah. He's a confused guy. I don't think we can even talk with him. Why? Who? <laughs> He's a drunk. Drunkard. Yeah. Forever drunk. So I cannot talk with him. With him. So the way you you have uh, experienced, uh, you have had an experience with police officers, how well, can you say they are reluctant or they, are, they drag along the person they are they, they, they reported to? Yeah. Yeah. I think they, they, they don't have any clue whatsoever about the job they are doing. They just lie on the, on the physical evidence. You have to push them to even come. Kutoka cases in Abidu na Alipia fair kuja hapa. By the time we are not attending Abidu na Alipa. So can you can you quote the exact amount that you spent uh, on the processing your, your case? Like, did you give out some money to them or something? Yeah, but I cannot tell you the amount. But I did give them the something. You gave us something so that they can hasten up the yeah. investigations. Yeah. And yeah. what did they do exactly when they reported you? They just came, they looked into the house, they also said, found the caretaker, interviewed him, then they also came and searched the neighbors. They also went to the search for the neighbors. They also went to the neighbors. They also went to the neighbors. They also went to the nature springs. But they found nothing. We couldn't hope for the neighbors. We couldn't hope for at least one item. We couldn't connect to the theft. But they found nothing. But they found nothing. If you have never experienced it, it may be easy for you to disagree with these experiences, but another victim of robbery with violence is yet on the line to give his experience. Hussein Billy narrates his events to Joshua Onserio, who is a member of our group. When did it happen? How did it happen? Hey. Mazee kulikuwa na hiyo dates exact dates hizi kumbuka lakini tunaweza kukumbuka na hiyo event za calligraph Jones. So nakumbuka hiyo uji mazee alitoka tao late kidogo. So ikabidi tulikuwa na watu kwa gate and simu yangu pia ilikuwa inazima kwa za was one of the coordinators. So ilibidi nimerudi kwa nyumba ku charge phone. Ndio nikirudi hivyo niende event. Lakini sasa vile nilirudi kwa nyumba nilifika poa nikicharge simu around around 1 1:30 so nikitoka hivi 2 nilikuwa nifai kupik mtu kutoka like pale kwa gogo nikikuja hivi kwa gogo ni huyo mama uza kwa uza eh nikuje ni mweke hapo like arudi alafu ndio nirudi so kwa hiyo time yenye mimi nakuja kupik huyo mzee like nilifika hapa by the way nilikuwa nimevaa gumboot nikavaa hood na nini so kufika hapa nikafika pale nikamchukua tukikuja hivi lakini kulikuwa kumenyesha so kulikuwa slippery alafu nini zake zilikuwa zime zimespoilizo na viatu zake so alikuwa like anatembea pole pole na nini so by, eh, by that time kulikuwa na wase karibu wanne wako nyuma yetu wanatembea tu normal 
mimi sasa mimi nikazoea tu maybe hao wase wanapiga stories zao like tunakuja tu kwa somewhere hapa like wakaanza kukuja haraka mm. then tukafika pale by that time hapa kuote kulikuwa kuna plan so tulikuwa tuna eh tulikuwa tumetumia njia tu hapo kwa the wall so kufika somewhere hapa like nikaona wako na haraka sana like ni wapishe ndio wapite so kwa hiyo haraka ya kupisha mtu wa kwanza nilipisha wa kwanza akapita kupita kuangalia ule wa pili apite like mimi ndiye alitoa mazao akanigonga nao lakini nilika mkono so like nikaumia kidogo by the time mwenye nilikuwa na yeye ule wa kwanza alikuwa na mnyanganya simu so huyu mwenye alinipiga like that kam, kambao nikamtupa kwa nini kwa maji jua alikuwa na gambu so akastick hapo then huu kuna wa pili tena akakuja tena tukaingia na yeye tukifight na yeye so walikuwa four four mmoja ameenda kumnyanganya mimi nilikuwa na yeye simu eh alafu ni kwa maji so wawili sasa like tukaingia na honda ni ya maji like kupigana and all stuff tukapigana like hapo for some minutes but sasa ule alikuwa alikuwa ni dem so ilibidi nirudi ni nisaidie like simu yake isiende but before nifike yangu ilikuwa imeanguka na hata sikuwa na jua like what time imeanguka so nikaona wame pitia by that time kulikuwa na wheat farm hapa like wheat ilikuwa imejaa so wakaruka wakaruka kwa wheat farm wakakimbia so tukabaki na mmoja by the time tulikuwa tunapiga huu mmoja hao wakaanza kushama mawe so ikabidi tunaacha hao wakaenda hiyo time sasa ikabidi tu nimeingia kwa nyumba juu kwa kwangu ni sawa oh, hapo kwa so kaingia tu kwa nyumba nkaoga mlijaribu hata ku scream hata kufanya nini kikisha kwa hela eh mazee game alikuwa na scream kibaya sana lakini ha. kuna mwenye alikuwa ametoka like that time kuna ile labda ya kwake ilikuwa milala mwingine na mwingine event eh like mostly walikuwa na event like wengi walikuwa na event so hakuna deal na dhiri post issue sasa ishu ile like kuna ripoti ya nani uta report kesho yake umeambiwa like oh yeah sijui andika statement ndine like rudi sikukaa hii umerudi hakuna shit so ni wase wengi wamegongwa na waki report hakuna shit inafanyika Did the first thing kwanza hapa hakuna anga light so anytime like lazima uweke tochi yako like ya simu umulike na hiyo ndio advantage wa utek like wana monitor wakiona like oh wale wako na simu ngapi ama nini like ya yeah. Ni kama ni common a common thing ni happen hapa more than once more than twice so kuna watu hii ni kama ni black spot eh hey, maze hey, hii hapa size maze ni black spot like kama hii size maze saa tatu kifika nikiwa the other side sizi kuja hii like na enda group ni kwa best yangu na dozu huko hmm. na get but but pia juzi pia kwenda Brookville saa sita nilipata dem plan pia ameatakiwa amenyanganywa like simu so hakuna mali safe so long as tu uko solo unatembea solo hakuna kuna bill safe maze so maybe issue. utembe na wase wengi mabeshte kama unatoka F2 ama unatoka wapi beba mabeshte ukuje na wao usikuje solo club. Eh, club, club, club. Yeah. so basically issue security hapa ni kama hata wewe unafaa kujaribu ngongo kidogo feel vile uzito feel feel uzito kidogo ndio uziwe lakini eh yeah. yeah, ndio so hiyo issue will be happen ni kwa fact psychologically emotionally ama yeah. asima ra kwanza like nita nyanga na simu so like but so, like hapa sasa umejua huwa kuna hiyo like once beaten kwa ishai so like always ngoka hapa like unajua tu vizuri hapa sasa hivi nikiguka nitavunjwa so kuna tu kale ka psychological like mimi nakwambia anga tu usiende like we pita tu ukienda hiyo after extracting information and hearing first hand experience from the victims of the robberies and theft we made a decision to visit the office of the chief security and the entire security department in Moi University in order to find out clarification on specific matters as well as to find out more about the security state from the head of security in the institution we meet Mr Obadiah Rotich the chief security in Moi University who takes us through the security structure and system of the institution He is also ready to answer our questions concerning the security cases around the institution. 
Mr. Obadaya, can you tell us more about the security department in Moy University? Uh, thank you. Well, students, uh, our security system in Moy University actually well organized in such a way that uh, uh, we've shown the areas so that uh, it can uh, we can be able to do or to man the areas effectively. Uh, we've categorized the Moy University into zones. We have about five zones. We have the Western Zone, Eastern Zone, Central Zone. We have the, the Nigeria zone. In all these areas, we have uh, deployed officers. Uh, we deploy them daily. Uh, and we have the ships, of day ship and the night ship. Uh, so if you say of, the, of late there have been issues of uh, insecurity, I would like specifically to know the areas that you, uh, you mentioned exist within the university or outside the university. Specifically, this is within the university. Okay. Have there been any security insecurity issues reported to your office? No. Okay. Fine. I think uh, if you, you, I thought you were just asking me. You are reporting that there have been cases, but you want to ask now if there are some cases. Eh? I can only point some few cases, and uh, this actually depends on the. It's a time uh, student mail cases issues. Uh, the issues that are normally arises uh, are issues of theft. And these are theft of phones, laptops. Uh, those are the major issues. And uh, if you talk of issues of uh, life-threatening issues, those ones are normally outside, but uh, as at as now, at least we have scaled down. That is then, in, in, uh, we are working together with the other agencies, other security agencies like the police, like our police patrol base here, our police in cases. So that, those are the teams that we are working. So as they man outside, we are also working within the university. So the, the security department of Moi University only deals with the is total security within the university and not outside. Yeah, right. I can say that uh, you know this is it's like a, this is a, an, an institution, and uh, we have rules and regulations that actually guide us. Because uh, me being a civilian, as a civilian, now I can't go outside to handle issues. But because of our interest of our students, uh, because our students, the students are our clients. Uh, those who stay outside the university, the one we call non residential, we have also, uh, it's also a call to, to attend to their issues. When they raise any distress call, we know how to address. It's an area that we can access, so we always respond, but working together with the, the other police. We can't say we totally don't respond, but we respond with limits. That is on our students only. Okay. What about, do you have uh, these uh, emergency numbers which uh, you can be con contacted to in case the, the, of any infringement on the security? Yeah, right. Uh, I can say we have, uh, we have our emergency number. One, we have the, what you call the hotline, that's the more universal hotline number. Yeah. Two, we have the ambulance number. Three, there is my number. All my lines are always on, 24-7 and um, also 360 days of the year. I don't switch off my phone. And then we have all those other security officers, the, those numbers that we gave out. We also caught an extent of giving out the, uh, the numbers, uh, mobile numbers for the patrol base, our police within, the in charge and maybe one or two officers. Even if someone is home and you call, they'll make sure at least we relay or they relay message to where the last question for the person who is supposed to attend that issue. You, you, you said that uh, majorly the issues that are, that are being brought uh, to your office are majorly the theft cases. So, if uh, for example this, there was uh, a theft case in the hostel or uh, in a resident, for the students are living outside the university, and uh, this person wasn't in the room. Do you have got any hint or follow-up where you can uh, start your investigation from? Uh, right. If it is an issue of uh, involving theft, especially the theft of phones and the laptops, eh? we've been here and again telling students that always when you have a new phone or you have, uh, you have a laptop, always try to give us the, the EMI number, the serial number, so that in case it, it is actually it is stolen, and maybe, you know, most uh, some of these students who still there, eh, they still and they switch off immediately. Then we'll be able to lie out with the police, giving all those uh, the, the EMI numbers for, for tracking. 
and they always have to report to the, you report here we book it we book it to the police so that at least when you go to when you are requesting from the safaricom to, to try and trace that phone i can say we've been we've been managing it 50 50 so far we can't say because some of you don't even students don't, don't want to share the emi number or it's rather an assumption or it's a don't get it to and then we we try to link up we try to piece up some information who was here last who are you with who normally come to this room where do you normally keep your key is it safe and that's now when we can zero it to some point or we can assume that maybe uh, at times you have a tendency of leaving your rooms wide open or you enter your room you sleep you don't lock your door and you see all those ones those who still those are basically students and uh, there are some inst inst instances whereby we've been advising students that when, when you are charging, especially if you are those, uh, the low floors, first ground floor, naturally, always make sure you have your window is locked uh, before you sleep. And then at times you don't leave your phone on the table, at least you can place it down so that those people try to, to pick the, to sail from through the window, they can't access that phone. So that's actually okay. that's how we normally do it basically. So far with these cases, have you have ever arrested uh, any person to the connection with the theft, or uh, have you ever recovered a stolen good? Uh, yeah, I can say we've done. We we've, we didn't been able to recover maybe some of the stolen phones uh, through tracking, and there are some students who are even uh, we call them back. That your phone is here, just come and pick your phone because you have the contacts when you are reporting a statement. Uh, we've been able to even to arrest those who steal, and uh, we take them to police. And at times we do it internally if it's a student, and at times we, we are also very human. Uh, at times it depends on the circumstances that one can explain. If it was a false accusation or actually an assumption or a, a linkage, a link that uh, you are being linked to this person, eh? at times we handle it internally. Because we also look at the hospital of uh, a student, parents as pay school fees, some things are circumstantial. But if you are a criminal, you are a criminal, you just go away. Uh, I can tell you, like yesterday, I think one of your students was arrested, one of your colleagues in the school of IS. Are you aware? Yeah? Yeah. And that guy has been, is uh, a thief anyway. I think he was supposed to be, be graduating uh, this year. But he has been hacking the systems, bank systems, individual accounts. Yeah, so that's why I'm telling you it is something to leave. And you see, when you when it's reported and you have tracked and you have caught, then it is done with us. Like that case, now it was beyond us. Now we just leave you to the other side of the world. Okay. Yeah. And uh, what are the security measures uh, that uh, the university is now putting in place to curb all these uh, insecurity infringes that we are having? For example, now the boy had uh, hacked several systems. What are some of the security measures within the university? Mm -hmm. no, that like, <laughs> like that one, hacking, there's no way you can uh, stop you from uh, doing what you want to do. There are some things that you can say, we can act on, maybe if you want to deter something maybe from happening within the hostels or within the administration floor, that's why you see we are enhancing those kind of searches. We are enhancing the kinds of patrols day and night. We are we are still insisting on this issue of bringing strangers. You get strangers into your rooms. Your friend at some point can turn against you. You see, and uh, more so maybe at some point it has been uh, a wish a wish that uh, if you go now to a place like uh, an ex which is a, there's a piloting project there for CCTV. Then we'll be able to follow up all these things. It will be easy, given time. Thank you. You have mentioned that uh, that this is uh, the most frequent security issues that uh, you attend to. Uh, a number of people we have interviewed, especially victims who have uh, been robbed or mad, they say that uh, yes, they have taken the measure of reporting to the security office, but uh, in the long run, nothing happens. That their cases are, they end up, they're just piled up, but then nothing, nothing, no measure is taken. You see, if you, if, uh, like, if, I wish some, that they can be specific. The issue of money, where we you murdered? 
Do you know some of these markings happens where the areas that are uh, okay, you are not even supposed to go, and that those ones happens at last, last, like past midnight. Where are you from? You get someone saying I was marked, and this someone was drinking. You get the person is drunk. All the cases, like okay, if you review cases of uh, uh, of rape or attempted rape, all those cases even if you go to our files, they are always reported. Or those incidents normally happen between two a.m. to three thirty four a.m. Surely. Who is, who, who is to be claimed? No. Who is to be claimed? Right. The issue of theft. If you report that I was, I was wrong for this and this in the room. At times, that's why I'm saying this is. At times, it is your own carelessness. At times, you you give out your key to another student. The same same person goes and duplicates the key. So you get that key as about three or four people who will wear you keep your key. You, know, you, you can't just come here and say my phone has been stolen and I want it back now. Is it possible? Even even if you go where, is it possible? I'm going to tell me about it. With a pattern. Yeah, so at times we try the match. That's why I was telling you if you can keep fast, if you keep up in mind and you know this is a system that uh, it is what's country way. On all the electronics that has, uh, that has uh, an EMI and uh, the coding. So, you, it's not only that you are already dealing with yours. Yours can be, in a day, you can be around uh, number 200,000 and something. You see, look at those cases. So, it, we forward it to police. The police also take their time. They do a report. It goes to Safari Code. Safari Code also takes some time. At time it comes back. We put several of them coming back positively. You have been told this phone. Call this number. The number that is using is this number. This number. When you call them, they are serious. Call someone in his home. I am not going to say much about that. It's a complete. But in the long run, normally the other measures will be How would they ever? At the end of the day, you have to come through this. So you're saying if all the details are found in the long run, they will be released. Yes. Listen, you normally all these things that you, you know, even if you go to this other room, all those ones that are being covered, sick of At times, you try to call the pattern. Because he or she feels like it was a case, why am I being called? And you're calling the same person to come and identify. She doesn't, he or she doesn't come back. So the things are just like that. You can see some of the things are in town. You come back, you try to call the person who was reporting, says I can't come there. Why? Ah, okay. Now, and I can come bring all these things all the way to home. You're coming from Meru, should I come up to Meru? To, to to take a hoof. Honestly, is it too much? Yeah. At times, people want to put the another picture that we are not working, but to those someone who has actually who, who, who is actually in his own senses can tell. We try so much looking at the population and the area of coverage and the kind of dynamics that we have now. It's quite it's quite uh, hectic, but we try the best we can. Okay. Yeah. Now that you mentioned Moi has a large population, uh, can you uh, 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 affirm that there is enough security personnel to attend now that Moi is really the population, the students are so many, uh, live alone just in the university, is enough security personnel to attend or ensure the safety of the students? Well, yeah, I can affirm that, that within uh, here, other than our security cards, we have our Moi bus has an attachment of uh, armed resources that's uh, totaling to over 20. And then those ones who live, those who are living outside, we always lie as daily, daily with the sub county police commander in KSS for to enhance the patrols and the, and the movement, the vigilance within that area. And it's always, even if you see of late, for the last, I want to believe, for the last, for the period that I've been here now, I want to say it has been scaled down. Except some few cases that. It, it, you can't miss, you can't miss an incident. And those incidents that happens, you you put the circumstances that leads to that uh, incident. All comes out of uh, the drug apnets or the drugs and all that. But uh, for a, a, a very, very clear or super student, you don't get any case. At times, you see, we share these numbers of uh, the hotline number, the ambulance number, my number the officer in charge, the number of police in cases, but students then to they don't make use of it. They don't make use of those the
those numbers. But it is worth making use of those numbers. Only. Even if you, if you meet the students, also encourage them. Those numbers are very important. You can be in a fix, not even within the university. How to set the university, even if within your home, or maybe you are traveling, and maybe you find you, you need an assistance. You always come in, you call, you tell us the incident, or you can text, we respond to you, or we give another direction. Or you can assist them. So encourage them to use those numbers. Can we get the numbers? Yeah, can give you the numbers. How is the state of security? I, okay. At the, at the current moment, it, it's I can say it's uh, it's good. It's well managed. That's what I'm telling you. The only incidences are those incidents of theft. Other issues that are life threatening, we are done with that one. We are done. I don't want to say we are done because our team is always on the ground during the day, during the night. That's why times we meet the police saying to my people, to my No, because we are concerned. If you see, you're walking. Too. You're walking with a, you're walking past around midnight. Maybe you have to ask you, where are you from? Where are you going? And you make it, or you are maybe a man. You are heading towards first. You are going to also know who is who now, because probably one should be a student and another one should be another student. Like you're both students, then where are you from? And then also, you know that kind of uh, to ensure that at least you all say it's our concern. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, have a good day. Give the numbers, eh? yes. Give the numbers. As we left the chief security's office, we found answers, but the judgment is upon you. Are these institutions safe for the students or not? Thank you so much for watching. My name is Nicholas Barassa. See you next time.